Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Friday the 2nd of April 2021. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to use the Universal Tarot for this reading. Let's see what the cards have to say and what energy we'll be working with today. So I'm going to choose three cards. Let's have a look at what the Tarot wants you to know and be aware of. First we've got the Knight of Cups. So we've got Romance and Extreme Feelings. Wow, the Four of Wands, which is a wedding, a celebration, major success. And then finally, it's in here. I love how the cards kind of speak to you and say, I'm in here, I'm in here, <laughs> take me. And then we've got the Four of Swords. All right, so let's have a look. First of all, we have a court card, which is a certain type of characteristic or an energy that you feel and embody or you come across in the real world. And then we have two minor arcana cards, which are temporary influences. And we'll ha we have two fours here. Four in numerology is about structure and security. And if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, um, my username on there is Gregory Scott 444. And the reason I put 444 in is because I feel that's a wonderful vibration, which really encapsulates this sense that you're trying to take divinely guided action. So you're trying to listen to your higher self and what your true self is telling you to do and then you follow up that information by taking practical action in the real world so you listen and then you act so we've got four and four here and what that says is that you are tuned in to this higher self you really understand yourself your feelings your own feelings are very clear to you so you're not gonna have moments where you don't know what is going on or what you're feeling or where you're uncertain you really are in touch with that and also, actions that you take on this day could be for your greatest good and what your higher self wants you to do. And that really makes sense with the Four of Wands because this is a gate card that says something is opening up where you're moving into a period of your life that's happier and easier and more joyous. So let's have a look. The Knight of Cups, all the Knights are somewhat extreme. The Knight of Cups is emotionally extreme. So he is madly in love and then he ghosts you it's uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it it's really all over the place and he the one thing he is consistent with is that he really devotes himself to what he's doing so when he does feel like he's in love even though it i don't know lasts 10 minutes he really commits to that and he will cross lakes and waterfalls and ride anywhere to be with the one he loves so the knight is saying on this day that you do have strong feelings that the um, potential for meeting someone who causes you to have a major emotional response is really high. And I always associate the Knight of Cups with love and romance because it's so drastic. And in my experience, the, the things that are really, really intense and that, um, that make you act a certain way, that makes you feel out of control, it can be things like love and being infatuated with someone else. On the downside, it can be resentment and anger and the emotions are really flowing and you devote yourself to that kind of thing. So with the night, it's really important to try and maintain some equilibrium. So if you find yourself really getting annoyed or just being massively in love with someone and there's no rhyme or reason to it, then just have a word with yourself. And before you, I don't know, make a wedding proposal or you decide to take someone down or expose them, really just check in with yourself and say, is this really for my greatest good and for the other person's greatest good? And is this situation as serious as I'm making it out to be? Because your feelings aren't facts, as they say. Just because you have an emotional reaction doesn't mean that that is justified or that it really has anything to do with reality. So it's important to keep a check on extreme emotions and to try and find a middle ground. The Four of Wands is in the element of fire. It has to do with a uh, part of your life that is really, really positive, that you are really invested in, like a marriage, for example, or like a family or a business that you love and adore, or your life purpose, doing something that makes you feel alive. And the Four of Wands here shows two women working away together. They get on well, so relationships are good. You can do really well. Um, in a team effort. So combining yourself or combining your efforts with the efforts of others is going to serve you more than if you just go off on your own. 
And then we've got the town in the background there. So this is something that's your happy place for a long time. This isn't just a flash in the pan. This is something that can really add something to your life and be a constant and something you can rely on. So the door does open. We've got the celebration wreath here of abundance. So the universe is kind of giving you an opportunity to discover something that really makes you happy. And that's interesting because that is an extreme emotion, isn't it? Happiness and being massively in love. It is really, really extreme. It's super, super intense. So the cards are saying, yes, you do have the potential to go overboard in your, in your emotions, but that that isn't necessarily a bad thing because sometimes you have to be a little bit out of control and you have to allow yourself to feel these amazing emotions as they come along. And then finally, we've got the Four of Swords. And that's really interesting because this is, I feel, somewhat incongruous with the rest of the reading. The Four of Swords is a knight who is lying down in a church. He's meditating. He's taking a break. So it could be the Knight of Cups after the big romance has blown up, for instance, or it's worked out, depending on which way it goes. So he's taking a break. We've got this stained glass window there. So he's in a situation where he is trying to connect with something bigger and he's trying to be restored so he's put his sword down he's not making the decisions he's not doing all the talking he's listening he's praying he's got his hands together there so he's asking for some higher wisdom for some guidance and here in the back we've got a woman kind of appealing to someone sitting above her and that's the same principle really it's I don't know all the answers to my life. I have these extreme feelings. What am I supposed to do about them? Am I supposed to act or not act? I don't know if this is going to work out or not. Please help me. Please guide me. So that's actually really great because the night card is now saying that this isn't a bad thing that you have the capacity to really feel. Because if you want to be certain about a job you love or a person that you adore, you have to have an extreme emotion. You have to feel it. So if you're someone who doesn't like to feel their feelings, your feelings are going to crop up today. You'll be able to really connect with them. And if anything, it may feel like your feelings are a little bit out of control and even a little bit scary. However, if you combine that with your thinking in the sense of let's apply some reason here, let's look at our experience and you make an effort to connect with your higher self to say, all right, I have these extreme emotions. Please guide me and show me whether I should proceed or not proceed. I need some help here. I don't have all the answers to um, the emotions and I don't know what the end game is going to be. So please save me from making a mistake or going off in the wrong direction by giving me the guidance now so that I can take informed action. The swords are ideas and thinking. And the card is saying that you're not going to figure this out by trying to think about it. Yes, you can use your experience to, and common sense to um, prevent you from running into disasters. But the solution to the problem isn't your thinking. You can't rationalize love. The solution is to somewhat humble yourself in a sense to say, I don't have all the answers. Please, universe, guide me. And then we have that 44. Remember, the higher self is very strong and it does then tell you what concrete action you can take to get to this happy place, to get to this doorway of change, of positivity, and you'll be guided through it and you'll walk into a different chapter of your life. So this is a magical day where the universe is kind of pushing you to move ahead and to um, change the frequency around and to change the vibration so that you can open your arms and become receptive to love and to all good things. So that's a great affirmation anyway to, to do that, to say, I am willing to be happy. I'm willing to receive all good. And then if you really want to get into it, throw your arms up and say, universe, I am ready to receive love. I'm ready to receive all wonderful things. And that in itself, just doing that action raises your vibration. And I think doing that in the morning before you start the day is a really great way to just tap into this. And then as you progress through the day, the strong emotions are going to give you pause. Once you have that pause, you say, OK, universe, guide me. Tell me which of these feelings I should act upon. And you'll get very concrete guidance that leads you in a wonderful direction. So this is a fabulous day. It really is. If you 
feel something negative and you still, you, you're like, oh, I really despise my boss. And um, you're like, okay, that gives me pause. I didn't realize I, I, I was that negative. And you think about it and your guidance says, take this person down, then that's not higher self-guidance. That's ego guidance. Because the higher self-guidance is only going to um, suggest things which are for your greatest good. So it's important to kind of suss that out as well. And in my experience, it's quite easy to differentiate between higher self-guidance and lower self-guidance, i.e. ego guidance, because higher self-guidance is quiet and and repetitive and you have to kind of strain to listen to it it doesn't always make sense and it doesn't feel urgent it doesn't cause you great anxiety if you don't go ahead it just makes a gentle but consistent suggestion for you to move in a certain direction ego guidance is urgent it says do this now otherwise everything's going to go belly up it feels really scary it can fill you with anxiety and it also says that if you don't do this then everything is just going to go to smithereens so if the thing is oh i hate my boss and if i don't take this guy down always a guy right shows my bias <laughs> if i don't take this person down then i'm gonna my whole life my whole career is gonna be hell and i have to do something immediately Otherwise, the rest of my life is just going to be a nightmare. That kind of thing you can immediately um, put in the, you can check the box of this is ego guidance. And just be aware of that. Listen to the higher self, which wants good things for you and is working towards your greatest good. And really try and sort the ego guidance from the higher self guidance to get to this place of things opening up in a wonderful, nurturing, loving way. Number wise, we've got four and four is eight and one is nine. Nine is the hermit in the tarot. And we've had that vibration a lot recently. Nine is about understanding the self. And you certainly do that through your feelings today. But it's also the completion of a cycle. So you're getting out of a space where things feel numb. You really feel things intensely. So prepare yourself for that if you have problems feeling your feelings. If that's something that you enjoy, this is going to be the one of the best days ever because there's absolutely no barrier between you and your feelings. It's almost like I am my feelings. And that's why it's important to insert a little bit of common sense and reason, especially when, when applying ego guidance because that's not going to serve you. So that's what I get. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. If you like um, this video, then give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online, please. Have a fabulous Friday and I'll speak to you tomorrow.